from a purely aesthetic point of view, I think you wouldn't even know it was an SR125 at this point. Um, as you can see, I've got a growing collection of bikes with fork boots on them. I think we should um, put the rest of its face back together. Maybe change the clutch cable first, because I've got a new one. Um, and then see about getting it safely rolling and rideable. Um, and then take things from there. Going to do a bit of uh, customization around the back. Probably... I want to lift the exhaust up and stick a bash plate on it, and I've got some bits for the exhaust, but um, some of them are stainless, some of them are not. I've only got a MIG welder here, so it could be a bit of a cobble job. Um, I think maybe we'll take it down a green lane or two and see how badly that underslung exhaust hits the floor. I'm imagining very. Maybe that getting taken off on a rock is um, <laughs> all the encouragement I need to uh, get the welder out. As for this evening, what next? Um, I think it might well be that clutch cable and um, putting his face back on. Clutch cable at this end is a relatively easy affair. You want to um, wind the adjusters in as far as you can. Winding the lock nut out and at some point you can see that the lock nut matches. Um, this all matches all the way back up to here. And then this differs by uh, lever but usually if you get it at 90 degrees there's a sort of a pass through and there you go so that's the top end that gives you the slack take note of which way it goes on this bike I don't think it goes where it was supposed to anymore but um, outside of this tube inside of the other one if in doubt just follow the wear marks <laughs> they're usually wear marks and the stickers and stuff and uh, I might need to a light on here to get this in um, but at this end it's not entirely different now you've got slack on the cable you can fold this little tab away like so and then giving the cable a push from the other end but I don't think it wants to let go so we'll have to back off you see these two adjuster nuts over here we're gonna have to back those off and uh, sort of take that apart I will um, flip the video for you if I can and but as you can see here I'm just slackening off all of this like so back the right way up go and now we've got that off we can reach in and you might just be able to see what I'm doing just running this lower adjuster nut until it's all the way off and we can see bare cable and then upside down again <laughs> we can pull through that bare cable and there's a slot on the underneath that lets us pull it out. We should then be able to draw this all the way out. And the reason I'm replacing this is because it's been sat stationary with a kink in it here. And um, it's got quite a bit of drag. I can't even move it by hand. So uh, even a cable oiler probably wouldn't solve that problem. Nice new off-brand clutch cable, it's got all the same fixtures and fittings, just a little less well made. Let's stick this on the bike. You've seen me take it off, you can imagine how it goes on, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, there was absolutely no way this was going to go by without some Facebook Marketplace style customization, so um, 
this is the number plate and this is a new set of rear lights. I'm not a big fan uh, of chopper style bikes and one thing that really improves the aesthetics of this bike to my meagre and uninformed opinion is the um, massive rear mudguard type thing uh, not being there. Not wanting to follow the course of a thousand other people and turn it into a chopper, I thought we'd go for a, uh, an old school 80s dirt bike style vibe with a pair of uh, previously available from just about every motorbike tat retailer twin rear lights with number plate light lenses, brake and stop. We'll keep the original indicators because they mount to the frame. Um, but unfortunately this is going to necessitate drilling some new holes in the number plate. Fortunately I do plan to put a nice aluminium plate on this. But for the time being we'll um, use this one and see if we can't use it to get through the MOT. Because every pound saved is a point saved. So I'm going to make sure this is even on the back. I'm using a ruler. Um, and then I'm going to mark out some new holes. Uh, and then just quickly drill them with a blunt drill bit. Because <laughs> that's all I've got around here. So, you have to excuse me, I'm working over the camera. But, um, it looks like about 30 from that side and about 35 from that side. So we'll split the difference. Say so 35 from that side. Nearly 35 from that side, so a smidge over. And we'll just um, hold that there and... make some marks I think we'll be able to see those you have to excuse my uh, hands I went um, riding for the day of the tet with Rob Orwin and my hands are absolutely destroyed from clutch control I took the Himalayan because this bike's not ready yet and um, the Himalayan does not have particularly off-road friendly tyres on it. It's running uh, the stock, well, I say not off-road friendly tyres, it's running the stock Seat on the front, which is fine on everything but what we were riding on yesterday, which was um, a horrible, slippery, like almost icy mud. Um, so little traction that the bike could fall over stood still. And uh, yeah, I've got the stock Seat on the front and the, I can't remember what it is on the back. It's a Metzler, but it's like a 70% uh, road tyre, so it really wasn't fantastic. I spent most of the day holding the bike up, practicing gentle clutch control, trying not to drop it. Yeah, trying not to drop it. And um, yeah, as a result of that, my clutch hand is very, very tired. I think we'll get away with the dodgy drill bit for this. We might have to rustle up some slightly different coloured um, bolts because they've gone from the uh, black part of the plate into the yellow part of the plate. But that shouldn't be an issue and like I said if it is new plate anyway. Let me see if I've got those bolts now. And just like that years of hoarding motorcycle crap comes in handy. You could argue that's still not quite perfect, but it's a lot better than having black ones in there, so... We'll go stick this on the bike and see how it looks. Okay, all mounted up on one of these um, trashy couple of quid uh, Amazon aluminium number plate arms. It's just mocked up with cable ties for the minute. I'll um, measure it up and drill some holes when I know if it looks any good. They could be a bit bigger, but I'd say that's passable. And they work, which is a benefit. Okay, that's centered up and bolted on. It's got some bolts through this rear arm here. Just tagged them with a little bit of paint on the bottom to hopefully prevent the rot. Just need to sort the wiring out now. There we go, all wired up, bolted in, nice and solid. I think that looks alright. 
took the liberty of doing a few more things. Um, obviously bolted the indicators on on the seat, tidied up the wiring loom. Finally got round to reinstalling the, um, don't know if you can see it, the back brake rod. Uh, I just need to tension that up properly because it's still got a little bit too much play in it for my liking. Um, but yeah, check the brake light switches work. That's all good. Done up the torque rod, put the uh, split pin back in that. Just uh, shot it up and down the drive <laughs> in the sort of few feet I've got here and the speedo jumped up so it looks like we've got a working speedo and we've even got working dash lights as well. And uh, the high beam light too. So we're very nearly there. Some stylistic choices to make maybe. Um, don't know whether this bike maybe needs anything else or whether this kind of Mad Max chopper come scrambler thing is its final form. I think we're uh, just on to choice bits now. I kind of would like to raise the exhaust up and run it scrambler style um, and then maybe weld up a bash plate. But we'll see how um, time gets on. First, I want to get an MOT so we can start earning some points and we can test those things I've just mentioned out in the real world on the lanes to see if they're actually things we need or whether the ground clearance we've got is sufficient. Because it's not bad as it stands, but hey, you could always use more ground clearance. So yeah, that's just a quick one from this evening. It's nearly MOT time. As soon as I've um, taken care of the last few bits, we'll get him booked in, and then uh, you can join me to see whether he gets an MOT or not. Time for some finishing touches, which includes changing the oil, which there's a 19 mil sump plug down here. It always happens. The engine's nice and warm. <clears throat> it's been warming up for a while. So I'm just going to let that drain out. The bike's also facing slightly downhill. You can see my uh, small engine IKEA oil tray has not helped the gar the uh, driveway floor which is still covered in oil. Inside of here we also have a strainer, which you can buy replacements for. Um, I'm just gonna check this, make sure there's nothing particularly awful inside it, which it looks like there isn't. And um, <clears throat> this one can go back in again. Looks nice and clean in the bottom of the engine. I'm only seeing shiny metal. Might just take advantage of the fact this is such a small bike and uh, give it a bit of a tip. Fair warning, get this wrong, it makes a massive mess. Since there's nothing particularly untoward in there, I'm gonna um, pop the strainer back in again. A few videos back I said I was a, a particularly clumsy, messy person, and a few people who know me said, don't be so hard on yourself. I submit this as proof of the aforementioned
the gear shift lever. But my level of arsedness specifies leaving it on and I'm paying the uh, price for that. We're making a mess. The state of the heads of these Japanese industrial standard, probably, uh, screws tells us two things. One, the last person to work on the bike probably didn't have a set of JIS drivers. And two, this bike probably hasn't had all the oil changes it's supposed to have had. And um, three, one of these things is not like the other, but I don't know whether that's intentional. These are so wallowed out that my um, JIS driver started chewing them up. So I think that's probably a um, an excuse for a new set on the cards. Okay, and there's our oil filter. Always take a good look at the new one, make sure it matches up with the old one before you uh, go ripping and tearing. As you can see, these look like the same thing. Pop a little bit of clean motor oil on the seals so that they don't snag. And then when this goes back in, it's got to go with the um, Passage facing down. I think I've also got a new o-ring for this here sake of the next person do these up evenly and don't do them up too tight. We'll wipe everything down um, then we'll put some fresh oil in. Allegedly the bike takes a litre so we'll um, just slowly fill until we see some oil appear on the sight glass. In case you were wondering, I've filled this with the cheapest old nonsense money can buy because I intend to run it for a couple of hundred miles and then dump it for some good stuff. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but um, there's now oil at the sight glass. So this bit's fairly trivial, spark plug socket, I've got a T-handle here. It's going to be a bit crispy and oily because we um, threw some two-stroke fuel in the bike. New one is not so crispy and oily. And uh, we'll just double check the gap by eye. And it looks like we're running the factory set gap. If it gives us trouble, we can um, take a look in the workshop manual. The other thing, I don't think it's going to be a problem on this bike, but always worth checking on small singles, is um, to make sure that this depth here is the same. If it's not, you'll have a smashing good time.
Okay, so it's MOT at 9 a.m. this morning, just getting ready to leave, and of course it's throwing it down with rain. There's some patches of blue in the sky um, up over there where I'm going, so hopefully it's not raining as hard over there, and um, hopefully there's nothing I've completely forgotten on this bike that's going to prevent it getting an MOT. I've got my head cam on, so I'll give you some footage on the way there, and um, hopefully we'll walk away with a pass certificate ahead of the Easter weekend. We might even get a chance to take this thing on a green lane. Like I said, unless I've missed something astoundingly obvious and it doesn't get an MOT. See you soon. the bit we wanted to see it's official this thing is now road legal so I better go and tax it and um, yeah then we can start earning some points a couple of little bits uh, was missing a split pin um, down on the front of the torque arm which was uh, pointed out to me and duly corrected and the rear uh, brake wasn't triggering the light I adjusted the rod and evidently I adjusted it a little bit too far um, so I just uh, adjusted that back again and then this telltale gave up I think there's a dicky connection in here because it's working when I left and then it stopped when I got to the MOT center I uh, disconnected it and reconnected it a couple of times it's come back to life but um, I think we'll take a look at that before we do any serious travel because uh, I don't much like getting randomly overtaken by people who think I'm turning left so let's uh, take it <laughs> 